Are we allowed to read now? <laughs> yeah, you got to go now. <laughs> I got to talk to the people. CPAC, how's everything going? You know, I got I to gotta tell you, I've given a lot of speeches, but I've never given the opening speech. So, you know, there's a lot of pressure up here. But something tells me you're going to help me get through this. Is that, is that right? You going to help me? All right. Well, I, I think the Schlapp's brought up a lot of key points about all the things that are ailing us around the globe. But the thing that's hurting us more than anything is we are divided here at home. We're divided as Americans. We're definitely divided within political parties and political movements. I don't know if you guys have been paying attention to the House of Representatives. We're divided there, too. But the thing that cures division is leadership. It is not governance. It's not going along to get along. It's not saying nice things. It is leadership that actually helps to cure those divides. And the time has come in America again for us to reassert, or reassert ourselves and bring American leadership back to the forefront of our country. And we talk so much about foreign policy these days, and for good reason, because Joe Biden has been a disaster as President of the United States. He's been terrible. But let's look at NATO for a moment. A lot's been made about NATO over the last couple of weeks. There was a time where America did have to carry all the freight for NATO because the countries in Europe were rebuilding themselves from World War II. And the spirit of the American people, we were there to do that. We were willing to do that. But now those other countries have to come along for the ride as well. You know, I equate it to some of your great sport teams. Everybody remembers the Chicago Bulls of the 80s. They had Michael Jordan. They didn't have much else. Michael Jordan dropped 63 points in the Boston Garden against the vaunted 86 Celtics. But that Chicago Bulls team lost that series against a better and deeper team. If the world is actually going to have security, then it can't just be America scoring all the points, grabbing all the rebounds, passing out all the assists, blocking all the shots. We need our allies in NATO to step up and do their part. Because see, the one thing we all know, whether it's been sports or whether it's business, when you have a great team working together with a common mission and a common goal, you can accomplish so much more than when you just have that one great salesperson who's just leading the way and dragging everybody else along. The success of Western democracy, the success of, of a Western way of life is predicated on all the nations who love freedom and pursue, pursue freedom for their people to do the heavy lifting together, not just relying on America to bear the burden alone. Yay. It was brought up by Matt about Israel. What happened on October 7th was a tragedy, not just for the people of Israel, but for the world. We were faced with a barbarism that we thought had mostly receded from the planet. And they faced it head on. We here in America, we stand with Israel. We don't equivocate to the radicals who might be in our midst here in America. We stand with them. For Joe Biden to decide that he's worried about his votes in Michigan more than the safety of our greatest ally in the region is terrible leadership. It's part of the reason why our adversaries are on the move. So my view is clear. Israel should obliterate Hamas from the face of the earth. And this is not a statement. This has to be born in fact. On Capitol Hill, we need to go back and do the job of making sure Israel has everything they need to finish that job. Because you can't have somebody come in your home, cause damage, and you do nothing. All you do is invite more of the same. And if Israel is our friend, and I know, CPAC, Israel is our friend, we stand by them, 
We support them. We do not stand in the way of them, and we want them to do everything they must do to secure themselves and to secure the people of Israel. Now, we got to also look at foreign policy here in our hemisphere. The Chinese are on the move in South America. And while we're having these petty squab squabbles amongst Republicans and Democrats, the Chinese have one mission, and that's to put us in a box. So we have to reassert our, dom our dominance in our own hemisphere. No more should we allow communism and fascism to breed in our own hemisphere while we just argue over the stupidest things with each other. I mean, stuff that really just does not matter in the plight and the success of human beings across the globe. There was a time where we actually focused on our hemisphere. And I, I want to be clear on this. This is not a statement of, of isolationism versus being the world's police. It's not that. It's being sober. It's being a realist. It's understanding that America in a dominant position across the globe means the best thing for the people of the world who desire freedom and peace, who want to actually grow an economy, who want their children to be raised up. A globe where China is dominant is a globe that is to the detriment of human freedom. And so we have to do the things that are prudent to make sure that we assert those freedoms in our own hemisphere. There's another statement I want to make about foreign policy. I'm not a forever war guy, never have been. I'm not. My position is very, very simple. Go kill the enemy and come home. I'm a, I'm a kid of the 80s, so I like G.I. Joe. Like, I just want our military to be G.I. Joe again. I think that's what most people want. That's what I want. If you're going to secure America, you have to secure its borders. You have to. We have 7.3 million people who've come into this country illegally. 7.3 million. And Joe Biden wants to make it an even 10 million. That's insane. No country would ever tolerate this. And so my position to my colleagues on Capitol Hill is clear. You either secure the border or you get no money for the government. Now, the press would say, oh, my gosh, Congressman Donald, you're talking about the government being closed. Oh, are you concerned about that? To the people of the press, you got your answer from CPAC. But I tell these reporters when they ask me this, I say, the federal government has one primary job. It is to secure this nation and to secure its people. That's its first job before anything else. The states that ratified the Constitution of the United States would have never, ever, ratified a constitution that would have allowed the federal government to allow an invasion into the United States. They never would have signed it. Those states would have kept their militias and they'd have said, I'll see you guys later, maybe we can work some things out, but that document is nuts and there's no way I'm gonna be a part of it. So we have to be very clear about this. Joe Biden has a decision to make. Decide, Mr. President, do you want to close Mount Rushmore so the southern border can be open? Do you, Joe Biden, want to tell 
the last remaining of our World War II vets, that they cannot see the World War II memorial on the National Mall so we can have military-age men from China and the Middle East come into our country illegally? Decide, Joe Biden, which country matters more to you, the border of the United States or the border of Ukraine? I love when you chant, but you're messing up my time, CPAC. I love it. Love I love you too. <laughs> we, we have to be serious about this. We, right now, what's going on in Detroit, in Denver, in Boston, we already know about what's going on in New York. You have the NYPD officers, and by the way, the NYPD officers, they're white, they're black, and they're Hispanic, they're men and they're women, and they're being beaten in, the sh in their own streets of their own city where they are charged to help protect the people of New York, and they're being beat up by people who shouldn't be in the country in the first place. What kind of insanity is this? And so for my colleagues on Capitol Hill who are concerned about, oh, well, well Byron, we, we don't win government shutdowns, I say, there's never been an issue facing this country that has united the American people more. And securing our border and securing our nation is not a conservative position. It is not a liberal position. It is not a white position or a black position. It is an American position. And that is what everybody in our country wants to see happen, and they want it to happen today. In our economy, we need leadership too. This nutty Green New Deal stuff, which by the way, isn't even that green. It's not even that green. When you go and read the studies, these solar panels are dirtier than natural gas. These wind turbines, there have been more men and women who have died from wind turbines than nuclear power. That is a fact. More people have died from maintaining wind turbines than they've died from nuclear power plants. But you gotta have leadership that's gonna tell the truth and set, set America on the track going forward. We shouldn't be chasing green technology just to chase green technology. We should be ch chasing the cheapest and most readily available form of energy so all of our people can be successful. You know, when they figured out how to do fracking, they tried to, to blame fracking and found out that they were liars about blaming fracking. When we started using natural gas, we realized that we cut America's emissions in half over a decade, and it still wasn't good enough for the radical left, because it'll never be good enough for the radical left. And so the only way you defeat them is that you gotta have leadership who's willing to stand up to them at every point, and we have that leadership in Donald J. Trump. But we have new things on the horizon. We have this great new technology called digital assets. And I know some of you, a lot of you, myself included, are concerned about that being used by the Federal Reserve and the Treasury with a central digital bank coin. I don't want the Fed doing anything like that. But if people decide of their own free will to have Bitcoin or any other type of cryptocurrency or to have you know, these tokens or stable coins, if that's what a free people decide to, decide to do, it is not the position of the American government to stand in their way. It should be the position of the American government to allow them to be free and make their own choices, because that's the very essence of human liberty. That's the whole reason that the framers wrote our Constitution and they ratified our Constitution, is to protect you, not to protect government. One of the biggest areas we're going to need a resurgence in American leadership is with our own government. These people are crazy. 
You have an FBI that has been spying on the American people against federal law. You have a Department of Justice that is picking and choosing who they're going to prosecute and when. Joe Biden has violated the Espionage Act. He violated it as a United States Senator. He violated it as a Vice President of the United States. And he should be prosecuted for violating the Espionage Act. I have a security clearance. If I take classified information out of the skiff, do you really think that the Democrats wouldn't prosecute me? Yes, they would. But what you got to have is leadership who's going to stand for the rule of law, that's going to stand for Lady Justice. Lady Justice is supposed to be blind, not political. Lady Justice is supposed to be even-handed, not deciding that a Green New Deal is, is, far, is way more important than, than a basic rule of law that everybody can see and follow. You got this stupid judge in New York with the $400 million fine. What kind, of, what kind of craziness is this? By the way, to you business owners in New York, come to Florida. <laughs> if you're a real, estate, a real estate guy in New York, you might want to just come on down to the Sunshine State. We would love to have you. I had to do that quick plug for my state. You know, I, gotta, I love my state now. Said, make America Florida. <laughs> oh, we're going to do that. <laughs> I want to make one, one clear point, because we talk a lot now about a two-tier justice system. We have to acknowledge that in America's history, there has been a two-tier justice system. There is a reason why a lot of black Americans do not trust the justice system, because there was a time where the justice system was abused against black people in this country. It was wrong then. It is still wrong today. Our country is best when we are not a respecter of persons or creeds or political ideology or race. Our country is best when everybody is treated equally under the law. And when you're dealing with radical Democrats who think they know better, who subscribe to the thoughts of Barack Obama, who said that they want to fundamentally transform America, I got news for them. This November, we're going to fundamentally transform the United States government. The last major area where we truly need a resurgence in American leadership is in our culture, and it's with our children. Man, just let kids be kids. Let them be kids. Little boys are little boys. Little girls are little girls. When I was a little boy, I liked little girls. <laughs> this is a good thing. This is the natural order that keeps society progressing. We also have to understand that the greatest environment for the success of a child is a two-parent household. Look, CPAC, families aren't perfect. We all know this. If you sit there, like, nobody, nobody clap. Families are not perfect. Everybody's family got something going on, okay? But even in that imperfection, it is better to have two parents in a home than not. I'm the product of a single parent home. My mother did everything for me. Things between my mom and my dad didn't work out. I love them both, but it didn't work out. I know firsthand having two parents in the house is better than having one. And that's not to diminish the sacrifices and the love and the strength that my mother had. I mean, listen, you want to see strong? Go meet a single black mother, man. They strong. <laughs> strong. Tough. But we got to understand that the formation of the family, that is the thing that sets the basis of culture in our country. So kids grow to be adults, and they form their own families. 
Their success in the family unit breeds America's success in our country. And our success actually breeds success in a much better world, in a much safer world. And this isn't about nation, nation building. This is about doing first things first at home, making sure America is in position at home, being focused on and focused on and solving our issues here at home. Because when we do that, the Chinese can't stop us, the Russians can't stop us, the Iranians can't stop us. Nobody can contend with a strong and prosperous America. So CPAC, this is where I leave you. I just want to tell you this. The type of leadership we need is not leadership that looks to just get along with everybody. If you look back at Michael Jordan or Tom Brady or Bill Belichick or Mike Shanahan, they were tough. They would say things you would not like if you were on those teams. But they held everybody accountable. They were focused on the mission of success. We would cheer for them if you're a Patriots fan or a Bulls fan. If not, you were booing them. But you would cheer for them because you're like, oh my gosh, look at what they're accomplishing. If that works in sports, if it works in business, shouldn't we have that type of leadership in our country? We should. We have to have leadership that holds our government accountable. We have to have leadership that's going to have a bold vision of what we should do and not be afraid of polls of what people think we might be, need to do. We got to have leadership that's going to say tough things when we need to hear them. And we have that leadership this November in Donald J. Trump. God bless you, CPAC. God bless America.